said 12.02. No, no. No, no. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're live. Am I really bright? We're, no, I guess not. Okay, so uh, we're live. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden I'm getting like a lot of light. It's okay though. The stage lights are on me. I feel very, very bright. Anyways, welcome to On Set. <laughs> I'm Daniel Norton. This is Dave. Seth's over there doing the. We got Cindy. Hi, what camera? It doesn't matter. Okay, Cindy doesn't know what, what to do, she doesn't know what camera. None of us ever know what camera to look at, so welcome to Onset. We do this every Thursday. We are coming in March. Look forward to it. There's going to be a change. We're going to start doing them uh, at 5 o'clock. So there'll be a 5 o'clock uh, shift. So if you guys normally watch at noon at work, you're going to have to work now during the day. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, you can always check me out at Daniel Norton Photographer on YouTube as well, which is my channel, or on Facebook, uh, and see me do, I might do like pre-shows and stuff. We're kind of mixing it up for March, kind of keep it fresh for you guys. Um, in any case, we're doing what I used to call 90-minute lighting school. Now I'm calling Photo 101 because you got to change the name up it once in a while, which is essentially I'm going to go through a lot of different uh, types of lighting, kind of give you an overview of a lot of things, uh, talk about a lot of basics, and then in the end we'll make a couple of shots. Uh, you know, we'll use the techniques that, that I show you. So uh, this one's going to be uh, ask a lot of questions if you've got them because this is going to be pretty simple, pretty basic. Don't feel like... Uh, you know, if you if you don't know, you know, you want to ask, don't feel strange. This is what this class is for. So, um, number one, we're going to start off with what is probably like besides using flash, which is my we might go to for photo, but we'll we'll move up there uh, in a minute. My my favorite um, type of lighting for photography is incandescent or tungsten, um, and this tool here, which is a socket made by Smith Victor, E26 socket. Um, you've probably seen these before, something like this anyways, right? Uh, possibly at a hardware store. That's what you're thinking right now. He's like, oh, uh, the main difference here is this one is designed for uh, up to 600 watts. So if you're going to put photo floods, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, powerful lights in them, you wanna make sure that you get one that's rated high enough. Um, it says right inside of it, 660 volts, or watts rather, volts would be crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, so make sure that you check before you before you use it. Um, it stay plugs into a regular wall outlet, whatever. My favorite, uh, like I said, is incandescent, which I have some bulbs over there. If you grab one for me, Dave, in those white boxes, I think. Not that one. Uh, that's a mogul base right there. I, I hit it over there. Okay, so you can get a bunch of different kind of bulbs for this. Of course, they look like regular light bulbs. This one is a 250-watt uh, bulb. As is, oh, hold it for a second. Made in China. Made in China or in Brooklyn. This one's also 250 watts. The difference here is that this one is a standard photo flood. Kind of looks like a regular light bulb, right? We're going to use this one. Hold it for you. Thank you. It is, it is kind of comical. This one actually is pretty cool. You guys may not have seen these before. This is a lot less useful uh, unless you're in a mixed light situation these days. But back in the day when I was a kid, uh, these are the blue ones. So this, is, this bulb is painted blue, color correct blue to make it more like daylight. Although it doesn't quite get there. They're around 4,600, I think. So they're a little on the warm side. But if you needed to shoot with, let's say, windows and you wanted to add light, you could use these blue bulbs in place of the, the traditional bulb to get the proper color temperature. So at that, let me roll back for a second and talk about a couple of terms, right? We're gonna talk about certain terms and then I'll start to demo them as we go. When you're talking about light, you've got temperature or color temperature of the light. What that means is light falls in different spectrums, right? You probably already maybe have entered situations where let's say for instance, you have your camera set for shooting outside and you come inside and you take a picture and it looks really yellow. Right? That's because the color temperature of lights inside, let's say tungsten lights or incandescent lights or even some fluorescent lights, is of a warmer color temperature than, let's say, daylight, which is on a cooler spectrum. The higher the number, the cooler or the more blue it is. The lower the number, the more orange. Now, that being said, if you're using a digital camera like we are, you just need to set your camera on the correct white balance and it will alleviate that. So it's not really an issue. Back in the days of film, it may have been. So maybe you had daylight film, so that's why you needed uh, to use this light bulb to match it. 
Uh, if you're using digital, just set your camera on incandescent if you're using a, uh, a tungsten or incandescent bulb, which is what we're going to use. Um, so this, uh, not yet. So we'll plug it in first. So this is just plugs right in wherever you got a plug. I happen to have one right here on the ground. OK. Uh, that's not really, is it the other hand? No, I think it's the other hand, right? OK. So this, you can see, is 250 watts. It's very bright, right? It is a. Uh, yeah, you can shut down the lights. Perfect. Thank you, sir. So this is a. Uh, actually, can we get a camera on her? Is that possible? I asked for all kinds of stuff today. Maybe that one? OK. OK, so this is going to be, uh, well, actually, we could do a photo, too, but I suppose I want to see it in the video because I want to show it. Mm -hmm. So this is a hard light. Now, why is it hard? I can tell it's hard without doing anything because it is small relative to the size of my subject, right? Hardness and softness has to do with the size of your light source relative to your subject. And the effect of a hard light is that it has very abrupt lines for the shadows. So shadows are sudden and hard. So yeah, we can do that. Can you spin towards that camera? So, oh, I feel very like, ooh. OK, so I, put, I take my hard light, and I'm gonna, you can see like the shadows on her nose, right? See that shadow line? So it's very abrupt. That's a hard light, right? Not the fact that she's blown out, that's just distance. You guys see that? We'll take a photo to, to demonstrate it even better. So I'll just hold it here. Now Dave's going to use the meter on the camera, I guess. Yeah. Actually, let me do that so I can see the line better. Yeah. Okay. So we've got our light. It's daylight, it's daylight white balance. So I was just talking about that. So it looks like it's. Uh, actually, I'll turn it off for a second. Uh, it sounds like it's very dark in here. Um, all right. So we can see that it's. Our white balance is set to tungsten, right, which is exactly what I just said. She looks a little bit warm. Sometimes on certain skin tones, that doesn't look terrible. But to make it correct, we just need to get, set our white balance here to, uh, to tungsten or incandescent. I'm just going to switch it here, call it tungsten, and voila, right? She, she's back to normal. So keep that in mind. I am shooting raw, so uh, if you are shooting raw and you screw up, you can just do that. Now, if you take a look at the shadow line, Right? See how it's very sudden? That's uh, typical of a hard light source. Is that bad? Not necessarily. Usually for portraiture, though, we want a softer light. The reason for that is that hard light brings out texture. Right? We can see the texture in her skin. That's because texture is, is basically the result of lots of little tiny shadows wherever there's a bump or an in, in, inlet. Right? So the hard light is going to bring texture out. A softer light spreads the shadow out more, so it makes the texture less obvious. So if I'm shooting something that, that I want to show the texture, let's say a sweater or even skin, if you want to show that, you want to have a bit of a harder light, right? Uh, a lot of times beauty photography, for instance, is done with a rel relatively hard light because they find people that have really good skin and they want to bring out that skin texture. Now, the other thing that this light source is is what they call specular. So specular is the opposite of diffused, okay, or diffuse. Specular has to do with your, sh with your highlights. A specular light source will have, your specular, your specular highlight is basically the reflection of your light source. So a, a small light source makes a very obvious reflection, right? If, uh, I should say a, a non-diffused light source makes a very uh, abrupt reflection. If you diffuse your light, then, oops, went the wrong way. If you diffuse your light, then it spreads out more. So your highlight becomes less contrasty, okay? so. Yeah, this is a thing that people say all the time. I, just, I want to clear these things up before we started. A diffuse, diffusing your light does not make it softer, unless you also make it larger, which is often the case when you put diffusion in front of a light. So um, sometimes they go together, but they are two different things. You can, in fact, take a light source that is not make it any bigger and just make it more diffused because you want the hard, abrupt shadows, but you want to bring down your highlights. You do that sometimes like on uh, more like spotlight type lights, like Fresnels and stuff. Right. Right, and this bulb itself is actually diffused. If we had a, uh, a like a bare filament, you've seen probably clear bulbs, uh, they don't have any diffusion on them, so. They do get a little bit warm, so you gotta be a little cautious. What we can do, though, to make this a little bit softer is we can put it into a reflector, okay? Typically, you're not gonna walk around with a Satcher Liberty uh, thing. 
Yeah, it's, it's cruising. So uh, I put it into a reflector. This is a 10 inch reflector. So 10 inches being bigger than two inches will make the light softer. 10 inches is still not gonna really be bigger than her head, right? So it's still gonna be hard for her, but it'll be a little bit softer. The other thing this gives us is control of direction, right? With this, the light's everywhere, it's scattered all around, which could be really great. But this will give us the ability to direct our light and control it. And if you noticed, this, by the way, is a Smith Victor uh, Adapta light, they call it. It's from, it's a, they're about, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 bucks. So this is gonna give us the ability to control the direction of the light. So if I bring my light back, I think I was on the side before. Uh, if I bring my light over here and I shine it on her, she's getting ready for it, she's making that face. Nothing happens. I think I bumped the light switch. Yeah, maybe. There we go. Uh, we can see now, she loves this. She's living for it, <laughs> right? We can see now that the light has more direction. And it will actually be softer. You'll see that it does actually soften up a bit. Oh, interesting. And it's brighter. And it's brighter because of the magnification of uh, the reflector being silver to the inside. I am in the shot a little bit. Yep, we'll switch the white balance. Okay. We're gonna switch the white balance on the camera so that it is correct. And now, <laughs> she's sneezing. Okay, we'll do it again. No charge for that one. So you'll notice, actually hold this. Yeah. Oh, so uh, for, we just did a demonstration on less expensive lighting probably two weeks ago. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out after this. Okay, so we can see here, you see the shadow edge? It's still hard-ish, but look at how it breaks up the edge of it. You're starting to see that, right? Still texture, still specular, but we're definitely getting a bit of a softer edge around the, the shadow, right? Let's take a look, compare them, because you're not believing me, but now you are. All of a sudden you're like, oh, he's not lying. That really is softer. I mean, it's not tremendously soft because it's only a little bit bigger, right? The bigger you make the source, the softer it will end up being. Um, yeah, we probably don't put it on a light stand. Because yeah. you know what we didn't build of all the things we built? We didn't build the uh, Matthews uh, Road Rags kit. Oh, yeah. OK. Thank you. I'm making it as awkward as possible by putting the light on this side. But I just wanted to be the same. Um, what I am going to do, I'm going to put it behind you. Uh, the other thing this reflector gives us is a bit of control, right? Like I was saying, I can actually take the light and I can kind of feather it so it goes now off the background, right? Now, obviously, I'm only hitting one side of her face now, but I am keeping it off the background. So I have that control going for me, right? Versus having the bare bulb. Right? And now, we have control, so if you wanna have some drama, right? But let's say you like that control, but you don't really like that it's so dark on her face. We could also bounce light back in, and you could use anything for that. We happen to have the uh, Special X uh, reflector here. The Seth makes these in Brooklyn, they're very expensive. Um, no, this is just a piece of cardboard, uh, and I'm gonna bounce light back onto her face. Now, you should notice too, and I'm doing this on purposely like this, that the light itself is going to be relatively soft on that side of her face because this is big, right? So this light on this side, look at how the skin looks, right? And we can actually bounce it back nicer. I mean, I kept it on one side purposely, but we could actually get it where it actually comes in and creates a bit of a nicer light on her. That should be a little bit better overall, right? Now we've changed the direction of the light and we're getting a little bit of a nicer light, right? And we're basically just bouncing that light from the back. Yeah. And we're, again, we're keeping all the light off the background. That's all we're doing. We have one light. I can, yep, exactly. I can also just bounce the light. So now I'm keeping basically most of, if not all the light off of her. You're gonna flare though, right? So why don't I do it this way? I'm gonna blind the audience for a second. They're gonna love me. So I could bounce the light in, right? So Seth will love me. Is that working? And again, what I'm doing is I'm taking this light source and I'm making it uh, bigger by bouncing it off this card. Right? And now we've got, sorry. Now we've got, 
a bit of a more a softer light, but we have a little bit more even coverage on her face, right? And, and a little bit of light's hitting the background now, so that's giving us you know, some light back there. So because we're bouncing the light, we're then losing the control again, right? So it comes down to where you're... Cool. Questions about that? Makes sense? Simple? Can you talk about the slower shutter speed for a second? Can we do it with the slower shutter speed? No, can you talk about why? What's the oh, okay. So, right, the, slur, the shutter speed is pretty slow right now because we're, uh, we're not using a tremendous amount of power, right? When, when you're shooting with, uh, with a continuous light source, any of them, whether it be LED or tungsten or, or fluorescent, they're, relatively speaking, not that powerful compared to, let's say, the sun, right, or a flash. So we're at 100 ISO, so uh, Dave just keeps going lower on the shutter speed so we can keep things consistent. If you were actually working with this light, you would probably want to go to like 400 or 800 ISO to, if you were in this situation rather than shoot at one eighth of a second because that would be pretty slow for a portrait. Um, although she's staying pretty still. We bolted her to the table, so she's got a little bit of softness to her, but she's, she's pretty still. Does that make sense so far? One eighth of a second, that one was, yep. No. Okay, so the metering is set, I think, on spot. But that is a good question, because I'm about to go into that. So we're using the meter that's in the camera, right? Because your camera has a meter, so that's the simplest way to do it. But when you are lighting stuff, you may want to uh, think about investing in a light meter. So what a light meter is going to do for you, I'll show you one. This is a light meter. This is uh, from Sekonic. This is a 308 SU. So this is a, a kind of a starter or inexpensive light meter. Um, you can get all kinds of light meters. Uh, which can do a lot of fancy stuff. This one does what I call the basics. This will give us the exposure, right, which is what we want. So I can take my light meter and I dial into it uh, my ISO. Let's say I'll go to 200 just to make it different. And I dial in my, uh, my shutter speed. Let's say, because we're thinking, well, I don't want to shoot slower than a 60th of a second. So I'm going to dial in my shutter speed, dial in my, uh, my ISO, and then I'm going to point my light at my subject. Um, I'm going to go with the, the harder light again, sorry. I know, I like them to, to kill you guys. Yeah. She's, she's going to be 10. Actually, you know what I want to do, though? I want to make it a little bit fancier because I like to be fancy. And I'm going to actually do it more like a backlight. Right? Yeah. It's in the shot? Yeah. Okay. So better? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that. Right? And that's going to give us our light. Something like that. Right? That seems to work. Her hair is going to be tremendously overexposed, because it's, but it's dark hair, so we'll see how it works. So I'm going to meet her towards her hair. And I can see that that's a, a, an aperture of 7.1 at 200 ISO. So if we shoot that. What's the shutter Yeah. Uh, 60th of a second, uh, 7.1 ISO 200. Now I'm exposing for her, her hair, basically, the back of her hair. What's that? Yep. Okay, so we're using the, the, the meter right now to meter the back of her hair, which is going to make her a silhouette, right? Because I'm basically metering this hard light coming in the back. She asked me for a silhouette shot. I was like, sure. Right, so now we just see her hair. Okay, so if you're just trying to meter her hair, but we actually are, want to make a shot of her with one light. So I'm actually going to use this as my, what they call the key light, which is your kind of your main light. So what I actually want to do is I want to bring this thing in, and I'm going to meter towards the camera, or you can meter towards the light source. Um, all right, so it's 0 0.9, which the camera doesn't go that fast. So now I'm going to have to make a compromise. So here's what I'm getting for a reading, right? Can we see that? No, almost. There we go. All right, so some of you guys, you know, with the big deep pockets have the 0.9 lenses. I haven't got that, so I can't do that. So what you can actually do is just take your... your, your uh, your meter and start to dial, because I'm just pushing the shutter speed down, and do you see the exposures changing? Because remember, there's always a fixed amount of light. All you're doing is, is uh, figuring out the balance between ISO, shutter speed, and uh, aperture. So I have a 2.8 lens, which tells me that I only need to shoot at 1 sixth of a second to get an exposure there. But now I can, of course, use my ISO and dial that up instead. So let me go back to, to where I was, which was a 60th of a second. So, so now I can take my ISO. I don't know if I can do this blind, but I'll try ISO, right? And I'm going to go like this. Can we see that? And I'm going to dial my ISO. You see how it's changing the shutter? Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, the aperture, right? It is, right? 
So now I'm at 4,000 ISO. I'm not going to go that high. At, uh, I'm trying to go for 2.8. At 2,000 ISO, I'm 60th of a second at 2.8, right? That might be fine depending on what camera you have. Let's, let's see. I mean, 2,000 isn't too bad. This is not the ideal way to use this light. I'm just kind of demonstrating how, how it works. Uh, but let's, uh, yeah, 2.8, 2,000 ISO, 60th of a second. Because remember, everything with lighting is going to be a compromise, right? Unless you have, uh, which we'll get to when you have like flash and like more expensive and more powerful equipment, then you can really take control. But when you're working with uh, certain kinds of lights or when you're starting out, um, you may have to adjust to the lights versus the lights adjusting to you. So. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, when we switch time uh, slots, there will just be one session, unfortunately. But it will stay live. There is a second session today, though, at three. Yep. Eastern. Eastern. eastern three Eastern Standard. Yep. Do we do it? Okay. Oh, I have to hold the reflector. Dave's on it. He's like, hold on, you're not holding the reflector, man. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right. So we're hot in our hair, which we figured we would be, right? because we're exposing for the shadow. This is the same thing that would happen if you put somebody outside with the sun behind them, right? It gets really blown out. Um, but we can see now we have nice soft light in the front. I mean, you can see that the pores are more relaxed. You don't see all that shadow. There's almost virtually no shadow on her face because this is bigger than her head, right? So this is soft for her, right? Some people have really large heads. This might not be soft for them. But for most people, this is going to be the, the, the size. So that's your soft versus hard, right? Uh, we'll, as we roll on, we'll get better actual portraits. I'm just kind of working through some, some basic concepts here. Now, we talked a little bit about the color temperature. Your other option is that if you wanted to, I'm going to point this at you again. Get ready to, to, to be roasted. So again, this is um, tungsten or incandescent, right? If we were, let's say, had a window in the shot, so we needed to be daylight. What we could do is we could make this daylight white balance by using a color correction gel, right? Which we should have. I think that orange thing's full of gels, right? There should be that orange tube. There's definitely color correction in there. Uh, where's the one that we usually use? Yeah, the jelly roll. Oh, there's also that. Where'd that come from? How exciting. A bonus tube. Is that blue? Jelly rolls are on looking at that little For our next trick. Nice. <laughs> Dave's pulling out magic wands back there. Are there any questions <laughs> while we're doing <laughs> uh, Where's the jelly roll, just in case? It's somewhere in here. There's something. There's something. Yep, there's a blue one. Ah, perfect. Oh, and there's also some diffusion, I think. Yeah. And Look at you with gels that are ready for this demo. Oh, and extra pieces of paper. All right, so. That looks like a full blue. Okay, this is, uh, I think, it's not marked, but I think it's a CTB gel, color temperature blue. Does that look too blue? And this will convert my tungsten light to daylight. Now, they do make such a thing as a color meter, which you could actually meter um, your light to match it exactly or whatever, but we know this is 3200 Kelvin because I have the... You have a color meter? Oh, clip. Okay. I was like, wow, I thought you were pulling a color meter. I was like, wow. Color meters are much more specialized. So I put the light on this side of her, so we use this as the... Oh, is that daylight? Yeah, well, I can shut, daylight. shut this down. So. No, no, oh, that's... Oh, Dave's so good. All right, good. So, you're also good, Seth. I don't want to make you feel like you're not good. So, as it turns out, we're in mixed lighting here. This is daylight uh, fluorescent, right? So if we take this light and we leave the fluorescence on, Sorry, guys, I'm going to blind you in the audience. Get ready. OK, so before we do this, let's turn, let's turn off the fluorescence. Uh, let's shoot for the fluorescence, I should say. Right. So I'm going to kill this. We're going to get an exposure for these fluorescent lights, right? This may happen to you a lot, actually. You're hanging out in Natarama shooting. There's fluorescent lights there. You don't know what to do. You guys shoot here, right? Doesn't everybody shoot here? Or just me? Seth does. We shot a magazine. Well, it wasn't the cover. It was like a. Oh, you did shoot a cover. You shot a magazine cover here. 
Yeah, and two page. All right. We have our white balance set on incandescent, right? This is daylight. So imagine this is Windows, right? So what is it? It's blue, right? Now, instead of uh, gelling these lights or let's say the sun, because you might not be able to have a big enough gel to cover the whole sun, what you can do is you can take care of the light that you have. So we switch the white balance to tungsten, right? I mean to daylight, which makes it neutral. Then we take our tungsten light with a gel. So you want to without? Yep, without first. Thank you, Dave. I'm gonna turn this guy on, ready? Okay, she loves that. <laughs> we never tell them what's gonna happen before they come, otherwise they'd never show up. It is bright, but... Uh... Yeah, it's gonna be bright. Well, oh, hold on, the light is bright, what can I do? Inverse square, oh. right? The further the light away, the further the light is away from your subject, the the less bright it will be, and and vice versa. It's still too bright. It's still probably too bright, but yeah, but, but this is going to eat up some light. Yeah, yeah. It's too bright that I see stuff. So I'll just take a picture. Yep, it's fine. All right, so it's hot. Obviously, we're going to do two things. We're going to color it with our blue. That eats up some light. Which is also going to eat light. I and that should. So yeah, well, yeah, we should lower the ISO now. Yeah. Light. Now, we're going to take our, uh, our light here. Now, there's, you've got a few options, right? We put this in front, which ate some light. But let's say that we shoot it, and it's still too bright. Oh, it's not bad, though. But let's say that we shoot it, and it's still a little bit too bright. Like, we're not getting enough of these fluorescents. We want more fluorescents in the shot. So what we can do is... We can lower the power of this light and make it a little bit nicer by adding a little bit of diffusion in front of it, right? This is a diffusion sheet. Or there is a thing called, I know I saw some. Neutral density. Neutral density is basically gray, right? You see how that works? Bright shirt, not bright shirt. Now, when you buy a pack of gels, this, is not a gel. Uh, this is tissue paper. You can use this on a flash, but don't put it in the front of this light. Not unless you want smoke effects. So I'm going to add the diffusion because I feel like it'd be nice to kind of have a little bit of diffusion on the skin. And again, it'll, it'll eat a lot of light, so it's good for me since I want that. And again, we're adjusting our exposure in the camera to, to match this new amount of light coming out of this, which is going to make the fluorescent lights brighter, yeah, right? These are Roscoe gels, I believe so, yes. Okay, getting better. But let's say we want the fluorescence to come up a little bit more, right? Because we're working on this room shot. We can add this ND in front of this. This is like, I think, half a stunt. What's that? I can't hear shoot. Oh. Okay. Is it one stop, you think? I think it's half. Half? Feels like a half. We'll find out. By the way, gels are generally labeled and marked. These somehow is, are not. So. It looks like half to my eye, but we'll find out in a second. Now, you may have seen neutral density filters for your lens, right? Okay, see the background's getting brighter? The reason why we're not putting a neutral density filter on the lens, or even a color correction filter on the lens, is because that will affect the entire scene, right? We only want to make this light less bright, right? We don't want to affect the whole scene. So if I threw, I'm like, if I was like, oh, I mean, I have a variable ND that I use for my video, and I'm just going to throw it on there. Yeah, that's cool. The whole thing gets darker, right? We don't want to do that. We only want this light to get darker. So that's why we're doing it the way we are, and we're balancing the light, right? Now we have basically kind of a punchy light in front. You can still see it's a hard light because you got the, the texture in the skin, but it's nice. You know, she can take it. She's got good skin for that. We got some diffusion on there, but it's got still some specularity, and we've got a little bit of a balance going on, right? Now, just so you know, because... Uh, who knows, maybe we've been lying the whole time and we're not mixing the light sources at all. So let's just turn off the fluorescence. And let's take a shot and see how much of the, fl the fluorescence are doing. And if it's nothing, then I'll just stand here for a minute and cry. There we go, right? So they were doing something. <laughs> all right, does that make sense? Okay, so that's we're color temperature, right? So color temperature, exposure, Hard, soft, all these things are going to be things you're going to think about when you're setting up your light. And I'm just using the most basic light right now, which is, again, a photo flood. Now, 
let's skip away from this for a second. We can bring the house lights up if you want. To, thank you. Um, there are other, other options, right? One thing you could do is you could replace the uh, photo flood lamp with a fluorescent tube in your photo flood fixture with one of these bad boys. Right, you've probably seen these before. This is a Kino Flow one, right? You've heard of Kino Flow? You have now. Kino Flow is professional fluorescent. If you go to Home Depot and buy one of these, it's gonna be terrible. I'm just telling you that right now. Fluorescent lights have a, are of a discontinuous spectrum. The more you spend for them, the better they are. I don't care if they say they're full spectrum, I don't care if they say they're daylight. If they're not good professional fluorescent, they're gonna look bad. Why are they gonna look bad? They're missing colors, which means on certain people, me, this is why I'm so adamant about it, because I have so much red in my skin, usually I go completely pale because there's not enough red pickup from fluorescents. Exactly like that. So put good fluorescents in if you're gonna use them. Advantage fluorescent. Doesn't get hot, right? Low power drain. Disadvantage, it's not so bright. And the nature of fluorescent is that they tend to fall off really quickly, which might be good for you, but if you're trying to light up a scene, like these get eaten up really quickly if you put anything in front of them. But this is an option. And by the way, this one's actually a tungsten balanced one. So if you just wanted to do it for the no heat, blah, 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 but you wanted to mix it with your tungsten, you could do that because this one actually is tungsten balanced. So they do make them both ways. That's from Kino Flow. They're probably like around $20 or so. So they're not cheap, but if you want fluorescent, that's the way to go. Now, of course, there's also fluorescent tubes, like which is what we're lighting up here with, and the Kino Flow makes them as well. Um, you know, they look like regular tubes. Oftentimes, if you're shooting like a scene in an office or something, let's say for a movie, they might go up there and replace all the tubes with good tubes for that. Or they just hang Kinos from the ceiling. You're, another fluorescent option, these are very popular. In fact, if you go to Grand Central in the, the, the Mac store that's there, there's literally one of these that says Mac on it in the window. Um, this is a, uh, a ring with a fluorescent tube in it. The reason why people like these um, is because it creates an even light source, right? This light source is, go, is coming from both top and the bottom if you're shooting a portrait of somebody, right? So if we put this in front of her, put this in front of you. Do you feel special with that in front of you now? Yeah. Okay, so you should feel special, <laughs> right? We can turn this on. This I think is daylight balance. Okay. They also make these rings in LEDs, which we'll talk about in a minute. So this now is relatively large. Should not, there we go. Did it turn on? There we go. Okay. Now. Okay. Okay, so there is a thing. Uh, I'm getting a question online about quartz halogen, right? So basically good halogen or quartz lights will be color correct. Um, and those are what you want to go towards if you like the idea of like hot lights, but you want better fixtures because the bulbs last much, much longer. You can get something like a, a total light from Lowell and like as opposed to a 10 or 12 hour lifespan of a light bulb, you'll get 400 hours. So if you're using them a lot, something like that is going to be, they do cost more, but essentially they're, they're, they're of similar quality. Yeah, we can kill those. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna kill the, the fluorescence here. We're just gonna use this, uh, we can actually use our light meter again if we really wanted to, because why not? Again, you have a light meter in your camera, but let's see, what did I say we're shooting at? Oh, he's just going for it. Oh. Use it at ISO 200. There we go. All right, so now we've got, uh, Daylight white balance, right? She has the cool ring effect in her eye if you like that. Uh, it looks a little bright on the screen here, but uh, it's actually properly exposed. It's nice and even, you know? It's, it's really clean. People like to use it for beauty stuff. The only thing I would say about this is that because it's fluorescent, it's not gonna have the best color reproduction. So while it looks good and it's good if you're doing a demo or whatever, you'll be able to get really, really great color. Um, it's probably fine for like showing somebody how to put makeup on or do, as a, a talking kind of thing or a quick fun headshot. If you need accurate color for some reason, you're gonna to wanna to actually light it with, uh, with, with either a flash would probably be the best way to do something like this. But it is kind of a cool effect and this is fluorescent. Um, so you definitely have that option, right? And these aren't very expensive, maybe a hundred bucks. A bunch of people make various brands make them. 
And of course, just because I like to use everything I have multiple times, we could also take this like this. We can give it like a halo. <laughs> Right, right. So we got that. Yeah, she's got like. Hold on, hold on. Boom. No, no. Hold on, what happened to my gels? She loves it. Nobody shines light on Cindy like we do. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we have the camera set in manual. We're just using the meter. So now we can basically, oh, oh nice. Dave's moving the light more central to get a, a, a nicer effect. Because remember, you can be in control of where your shadows fall, right? And if you want your shadows to be uh, typically on a beauty type setup, or especially on women when I'm making portraits of them, I like my shadows to be uh, central and down, what they call butterfly lighting. The reason for that is it kind of narrows the face. It actually adds a little bit of depth. Um, it's usually very flattering on most people. Um, if you start putting the light to one side, like you see a lot of, uh, diagrams where the softbox is always right there, then you get shadow across the face, as you've noticed earlier. And that's not always the most flattering thing on somebody. Uh, so, you know, be, be, be conscious of where your, <laughs> where your light falls on the person's face, right? Any questions so far? Oh, interesting. <laughs> okay, so she's a bit underexposed and the light's a little bit hot. So we can change our exposure. I think this actually is dimmable maybe? Look at that. Well, okay. There's like two settings. There's like bright and like you turn it very far and then it's somewhat dimmer. You don't have as much control with fluorescent lights and things like that. LEDs are much better if you're going to dim stuff. They have a lot more range generally. There we go. Now she got the nice donut going on. Uh, you know, and we've got a, a little bit of a combination of a light. You can also go like this. Hold on. Get ready for it. This is actually sized exactly to go like over your head. Oops. Like a, Don't worry, I've never, I've never dropped this on anybody yet. I've actually never used this before, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened it from the box, I've never seen, but I've never dropped one. All right, so actually I'll just, there we go. Oh, I was gonna do it like over around her neck. We could do it above her head. That probably makes more sense. All right. How, uh, you have insurance, right, Cindy? Um, yeah. yeah, she's got insurance, she's good. All right, we can also take this like this. It's like she's getting her hair did. <laughs> hold on, Is, does she have a pole, pole coming out of her head? That's what they make Photoshop for. All right, hold on, I'll lower it this. All right, that's probably pretty good. Is that in the shot? Getting a little crazy here. <laughs> got to experiment, got to try different things. Yeah, actually, looks pretty good, right? I mean, she feels, she feels a little weird, but. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so now all the light's from above, right? Oh, 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 okay. oh Dave's working it. You gotta build it up, man. No, man, just do it. This is why this is, the, we're not gonna do it. Right, she's like, oh. But now we can also, right, utilizing the uh, specially made in Brooklyn <laughs> reflector card. Can you can hold it if you want. Right, she's getting like a. She's having a moment. Yep. So now she's got this thing going on, right, we're lighting her. You know, now she's got like pretty even light on her face from that. Maybe not quite as high with your chin. And actually, you could do that actually, but then look right at the camera, I think it would be good. And with your eyes. Uh, I can get it higher, sure. Like Seth wants it higher. Uh, wait, look here? Yeah, look there. Like chin up and look kind of at the camera. Chin up. Yeah, chin up a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Now, I, the reason why we're doing this, besides the fact that we're just a little bit crazy, is because I just want you to know, like, you're going to buy something like a ring, and it's like, the, what does everybody do when they buy the ring? No, you got to go chin higher than that. Uh, well, yeah, because I also raised the light. Oh, also the reflector didn't do anything. You got to. She's slacking over here. You wanted to hold the reflector. She was like, "Can I hold it?" Yeah, <laughs> you had two jobs. 
but the thing is, you get a ring, right? And everybody gets a ring, and they see it, and they put it in front of the person, and that's what you do. But hey, I have a light, right? A light that I can use any way I want. This is, this is a light, and I want to change it up. I'm going to put it in different positions. That's, that's really the idea. One of the reasons why I do this particular seminar is because, I mean, I don't want people say light is light, because there's definitely reasons to have different kinds of lighting. But the idea that you can use your light in more ways if you just understand the basis of photography is very important, right? A lot of it just comes down to technique. What's wrong? Oh, really? That's going to be super overexposed, but I'll do it because Seth says. No, no, Seth said to do it. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. It's impossible to do what Seth's asking for. And then lean into it like this. That's it. Like, like you're curious. Look, look, and look at Seth like he doesn't know what he's talking about. All right, so. Yeah, and we'll do this as a backlight. All right, so, questions? No, is this too basic or it's too advanced? <laughs> but everything makes sense, right? Okay, good, all right. We're gonna try, we're gonna bring Flash in in a second, I think. Yeah, we're doing good. We're cranking. They pay me by the minute, so I gotta delay as much as possible. Oh, shoot. Okay, sure. So the question is, we're using two or one even sometimes. Do we need three-point lighting? Yeah. We'll get into that a little bit more as we keep going. Right now, because I'm just showing kind of what light does, we're, we're just using the one to make it less confusing, but I will actually form an actual photograph before the end of this, I swear. Um, <laughs> but sure, three-point lighting. If, if, people, if you would ask me, you were like, Daniel, how many lights do I need? I typically would say you can do most things with three lights. That's a good place to start, but if you can only afford or you can only carry or you only have one light, you can still make photos, right? Oh, interesting. Oh, he's making a face. What's wrong? No, we're not going to add another bounce board over. Okay, so let's move on from this for a second, because again, we're not trying to make a perfect shot here. We're just talking about technique. Um, and let's actually do, we took, uh, I'm going to keep using my photo flood because I love it. Um, but I want to add something to it. Let's add to it. Well, let's talk about a, another way, I should say, to soften it. Do we, we have the Matthews kit, right? So, eh, stuck. All right, this is, Matthews makes this, road rags, right? So what this is is basically a kit of portable frames that you can then put various, uh, hold that fabrics, et cetera, are on it. And I'm going to put on it diffusion. So this is artificial silk, which is a pretty heavy diffusion. And instead of just that little piece of diffusion that I stuck in front of the light when we were trying to set it up before, right? Now I'm going to use what is essentially a very large piece of diffusion, right? Using a large piece of diffusion is going to make the light bigger, right? And if I make the light bigger, it's going to make it softer, right? So this is going to make our light both diffuse and soft. And it's fun to build. It's like a little toy. I used to get Legos when I was a kid. Well, this isn't really like Legos, I guess. They still have Legos, right? They made a movie out of it. A Lego movie. Well, I don't know. I'm, I don't play with toys. There's a Lego store, too. There's also a Kellogg store. Has anybody been to the Kellogg store? You can have cereal at any time of day. Yes, it's $8 a bowl, but. Oh, we can use that. Perfect. OK, so again, we can bring this guy up. Yeah, it was, it's actually like, it's like $3 for a bowl of cereal and like $8 for the milk. Oh, you want a scoop? Right. right. <laughs> but, yes. Yes, exactly. In, in their defense, they do have the Instagram station there, so you know it's worth it. Actually, you can write it off as marketing budget for your photography career if you Instagram your cereal while you're there. No, <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> okay, so now we're using this. Now, here's the thing, right? Our light's here, our silk's here, right? 
not only is it physically larger, it's closer, which makes it bigger, right? So we can move this right up close to her, and then to help control our power output, we can move the light back and forth. And that will give us a little bit more control. We can also aim the light slightly at different parts of the silk to kind of control uh, you know, where the light falls exactly, make it a little bit more organic, organic. This is the reason, this is answering the question that's about to come up. Isn't that just like a soft box? Kind of. I mean, a soft box, which is back here and we'll use in a second, is essentially a silk in front of your light, right? This, though, allows you to kind of position your light in various spots around. We'll probably have to kill the overheads again. Yeah, Thanks, Seth. We got, we got lots of overhead killing going on. So this is going to be nice and nice and clean. And the other thing, too, by the way, is this road rags kit comes with a, a flag material or block material. So we could use it to, to knock the light off the background if we wanted to, which Using one light will make you a better photographer. I don't know. Seth just tells me what to say. Oh, will it make me a better photographer? Uh, okay, will one light, that's a good question. Uh, white balance, right? Um, okay, so this is what I say about lighting in general. This is, I'll give you a bit like general philosophies about being like better at lighting, not like technical stuff that we're talking about here. Um, yeah, I, don't, I try not to set up any more lights. I mean, I joke about it a lot, but I try not to set up any more lights than I need to kind of go back to your, your question. There's certain things, like if I need to make a classic corporate portrait, I'm probably going to do a three-point lighting because that's the standard thing, right? So I need three lights. If I only need one light to get the effect that I want, then I'll use one light. But what I almost always do is I set up one light at a time, no matter what. And I think that is going to help you to not kind of confuse yourself as to what you need and don't need, right? Because if you set up your first light and it looks great, and then you set up the second one and it's better, and then you set the third one and it's better, that's good. If you set up the first one and it's great, you set up the second one and it's not better, then get rid of that light. Like, you don't need to use it just because it's there. Once it's on a stand, you can still build a client for it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now this is through the silk. Nice and diffused, right? Nice and pretty. So just to, to, uh, to bring you back to where we started, just in case uh, we're going to go way back. Right? So, right? This was, no, that wasn't the beginning. Where's the beginning? Yeah. Oh, what's that then? Oh, yeah, that was the beginning. Yeah. Um, this, is the, this is the light bulb, literally the light bulb being held in my hand, right? And now we have it in a reflector through a silk, right? See the difference that makes? Modifying your light, knowing its purpose, right? Now, maybe we wanted a hard light, depending on what we were doing, and you would leave it that way. But for a portrait, this is very nice, right? And we still could. It's still a little shadow on the side of our face. You can always bring the reflector in. There's no charge for that. It has little holes in it. Fill it in, right? And now, basically, you've got what would be a really nice shot. Not three-point lighting, but a simple, clean portrait. Right? We have a little bit of light in the background. Uh, and we have a $30 light on a stand, right? It's a very, very simple, very, very basic light. This could easily be a clip light. And that could easily be like just a piece, any kind of fabric as long as you're using neutral fabric that will diffuse the light. Professional stuff will give you consistent results, though. That's the reason for, for buying the more high-end gear. OK. Right now, our ISO is at 200. We're at 1 60th of a second at 3.5. So, uh, 1 60th of a second, 3.5 uh, aperture, ISO 200. So this is actually well within a normal range that you could shoot somebody. So this is actually totally fine. Um, I probably would add a separation light in the back just to finish it, because I'm like that. But you know, you don't have to. Cool. And actually, let's do that, and we'll add. Is it true bigger the modifier than the light? Is it true bigger the modifier or what? Better the light. Better the light. Better. No. I never like to use the words better, right? Because everything that you do should, be, should have a reason, right? Is a softer light better for what you're doing at that moment? Then a bigger light would be better. Maybe a harder light's better. Maybe if I'm trying to simulate sun coming through the window, Right? Having a huge softbox is not the right tool for me. I might want like a Fresnel or something. So better, no. Bigger is softer, though. You're asking if white balance somehow affects autofocus. Does white balance affect autofocus? Not in my experience, no. OK, so this is a bicolor LED. So this is an LED. Everybody get ready with blinded? Uh, every LED company likes to show you how bright it is by going like this. <laughs> LEDs will always seem really bright when you shine it in somebody's face because they are a bunch of point sources. 
right? It's a whole bunch of hard lights in one spot, right? They have a little diffusion in front of this one to soften it out a little bit, but it, they do dim. This one happens to be bicolor. Um, Heather hooked me up with this. I have no idea how to operate it, so we'll see if I can do it live. Why not? I'm assuming that does something. Nope. Okay. Oh, color. Okay, that's cool. The C must be, there we go. Now I'm switching it to daylight. I don't know if let me see it's daylight. You guys can see that? I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but this is a tungsten light, right? Yep. So I'm going to switch it to tungsten. Oh, really? You have to push yeah. the button each time? I'm going to have like really strong fingers when this is done. I'll move it in the other direction. It's more than I'll look there. There you go. There we go. I'm working that finger. Working it. <laughs> it's like when I used to play uh, the my old Atari. You'd be pressing the button. Like, all right, so Atari, no? No? OK. We're going to use uh, two lights right now. Right? We're currently using one. We're about to add a, a second one. We're going to do a separation light with the LED. Right? We could put it back here. Now, this is not going to be nearly as strong as our tungsten light because that's 250 watts. You know, you're not going to, a battery powered light is not going to typically, especially a small one, is not typically going to be as bright. But we'll get a decent amount of juice out of this, I think, to give us some separation. I'll crank this bad boy up all the way. This one goes to 11. Uh, no, actually, it goes to higher than 11. I'm guessing 100 is is, is going to be the best. No, probably 99 because the screen's weird. If you're, if you're putting a home studio set up, would it be better to have a dark wall or a light wall? There we go. So, by the way, you may notice. Oh, yeah, there we go. A little, little hair light action on there. Right? You see that? A little hair light action versus no hair light, right? Right? Oh, right. There was a bounce in that one. Hold on, we gotta actually match it. Okay, so actually, I'm sorry, how many lights was I using before? Two, right? Because this is a light. Once I put it in the thing, so I was using two in that last shot, and now I'm gonna use three. You probably notice, although you guys probably can't hear Dave, um, that almost every time I hold the light up, Dave goes, that's in the shot, right? And why? Why do I always put the light in the shot? Because generally speaking, you want to put your light as close as possible without being in the shot. So I always put it right in until it's the, in the shot, then I move it out. That way I know it's in an opt optimal position. But now we've got a bit of a three-point lighting feel going on. The background is lit just by our front light, just pouring past it, right? If we needed that background to be the proper color that it is, I'd have to put the, some light on it, because obviously it's dark. Um, we could also probably use this to light the background a little bit. I don't think it'd be very bright, but we'll try it. Oh, hold on. I need help. I need help. I'm staring at you. I need help. That's a special X reflector. Don't screw it up. Oh, get in close. Don't be afraid. I mean, she's a little crazy, but. Is that doing anything? Boom, now we have a halo behind her, right? Perfect, well done, sir. Okay, so you know we can do this a bunch of different ways. This is, again, an LED now. This is pretty small, right? I could use this as my key light, so let's turn that one off. But it's going to be tremendously hard, right? First of all, it's not as bright as the, as the tungsten light, so I want to move it in close. That's the way she feels about that, right? <laughs> By the way, if you ever uh, just have one of these on top of your camera and you're running around, that's the face people are going to give you, especially in a dark room. All right, so hard light, right? It's also very specular. We could soften it, but it's again, it's not the most powerful light in the world. Oh, you want to bounce it? All right, we'll bounce it. Actually, I can probably bounce it. No, all right, I'll do that with this. Yeah, that'll work. I'll put it right here. How about that? I mean, we're losing a ton of light. Now we're going backwards. Okay, not terrible though, right? It's not a lot of light, but we were able to pull it off. The idea is that you know how to use light, right? Well, apparently that doesn't turn it off. Daniel, what yeah. about the 
This is an LED. I don't know. They handed it to me. I will, I will look it up. It's actually pretty bright for a small LED. And it's by ICAM, which is a pretty decent company. So this is called the Onyx. And it is has easy controls. 15. 15 watts. OK, so cool, right? A small LED light can be useful for a lot of things. What's the best thing about that light, really, to me? Well, the fact it's bicolor is really nice, but also it's so tiny, it's battery powered, right? So if I have to go somewhere and I only have my camera bag with me and I, and I, and I want to be able to light something with a constant light source, it's going to be great to have. So I never want to discount like that a light is good or bad. That's why when people say best or whatever, it really depends on what you're doing, right? This is not terrible, all things considered, right? It's a piece of cardboard in a battery powered light. Now, we did have to shoot at, uh, oh, that's a 60th of a second at 2.8. That's actually not terrible. That's, no, 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 that's what the camera said it now. Oh, ISO is 800, though. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I'm looking down there. So the ISO is 800. So we had to compromise a bit there. On, depending on the camera, that might not be a problem. Now, what we could do to solve all of that problem is introduce flash, right? Ah. Uh, Queen, come on. Audience. All right. All right. Flash is powerful, right? This little tiny flash is more powerful than all the lights we've shown uh, today. You can put it in your bag. It runs on battery. It has in it what's called a TTL, which is an automatic kind of uh, ability to, to meter itself so you can be working really quickly on the run. Um, you can use take it off camera if you have a radio, which I didn't take a radio to show you guys, but the main kind of way that this works or the, it's designed for, and I usually call it this, I usually call them camera flashes because they're designed to go on top of your camera, right? We can put a flash on top of the camera, and now we can go to 250th of a second at f8, 100 ISO. I just throw those numbers out there. We should, I said, didn't I say start with a musical number? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. I'm a terrible singer. Yes, you are. But I put a lot of effort into it. <laughs> Speaking of that, you're going to do it without first? 250th of a second. I feel like one of those like sidewalk barkers. <laughs> 250, why 250? That's the maximum speed at which our camera synchronizes with flash. Like right? Six. Okay, five, six, that's fine. There is a thing called high-speed sync, and actually this camera does it with this flash, blah, 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 blah. That is not photo 101. That's photo 102. We're not going to talk about high-speed sync. I almost never do. People will overuse it. But anyways, right now, 250th of a second, f5.6, 100 ISO, right? You want 100 ISO? Right? We have a black frame, right? It's completely black in here. All the lights overpowered. We turn the flash on. We say, hey, man we got to light up this model. Could you please take care of it for us? And the flash is like, sure, dude. And then it does it. What, dude is like a, like a universal. Now, it also makes them very blue. Why? Because we're set on tungsten, exactly. We've been set on tungsten white balance from before. Capsule will always keep the last setting that you had. Uh, yep. All right, he's going to take another shot. It's easy. So it's important that like you, you see this because uh, oh, oh, it's recording from the last, so you have to go here, and you have to go shot. Uh, it's fine. No, they haven't set on tungsten yet, so you have to do it there. Boom. All right, now, it, this is how it's shot. This is neutral. Now, what do we have again? We're back to the beginning. Small light source, specular highlights all over the place, hard shadows, right? You might like this style. If you do, well, then you're probably wishing I had done this at the beginning and you wouldn't have to sit through all this. Um, <laughs> but the same thing works with the flash, right? We can soften the light by putting, we can bounce it. Daniel, can I ask a question? Of course. Why one, why uh, 200 of a bit, uh, 250th of a second on the 6th? Why not 160? Okay, so that's a good question. So why did I immediately jump to 250 on my sink? And also 100 on the ISO, they're the same answer, which is that's the fastest and that's the lowest. And since I'm not using any of the light in the room, I just want to ensure that. Right? That gives me more room to move. Because let's say I went to 1 125th, right? 
I might have had to go to F8 to get rid of the, the light in the room, and I don't necessarily want to do that in this situation because this is a battery-powered light. I don't want to eat up a lot of light. So there's a lot. You can pick anything you like. I mean, I could have shot it at even, probably even a 60th at F8. It might have gotten rid of the light in the room. So as a starting point, do you always take the fastest? Yes. As a starting point, if I want to eliminate the light in the space, I always set my camera at the lowest ISO and the highest shutter speed to start with. That's just how I do it. Highest sync speed, yes. OK, so Thank you. no, you're that's a good question. I just usually I just do it because I know that'll work. Sometimes you might want to go a little slower for various reasons. One of them might be if you're using radios in a really kind of heavy electronic area. Sometimes uh, you're, you can have like delays, so you might have to go a little slower in your sync speed. Um, but if it works at 250, I usually stick it there. Yeah, or if you want to pop and blur or something. All right, so, oh, that's what we're going to do. All right, I like that. No, no. Yes, different cameras have different sync speeds. Most Canons are around. Uh, okay, so what happened there? I think some of the side light hit her, actually. Bit, yeah. yeah, we might have to flag it. Or, uh, most Canons are around 200. This one's 250 because you paid extra money for it. Uh, a lot of Nikons are 250. Some cameras are 160. Yeah, it depends on this, this system. Pentax 6x7 is 30th. <laughs> yeah, just put your hand here. So what's happening here, by the way, just so you know, we did bounce the light in, but the edge of the flash caught her, and that's why we have this like hard, so we got to kind of like block it with your hand or something once you're set. Yeah, little hand action. Right, that should, that should take care of that. Make the light nice. There we go, wrapping across. Again, it's a little softer. It will be even softer if we were to bounce it or put it through the silk, because it'll just be easier to aim it. Not because, this, the, because diffusion makes things soft, but because it'll be easier for us to put it where we want it to put it. I can put it closer to her. I'm actually going to put it like this. Uh, you can probably just aim it right through it. Uh, I know, he's going to point it more at it, yeah. We could also diffuse the bounce if we wanted to get really crazy. Right? And now we've got directional. Well, that's really ripping through for some reason. Yeah, that why you can do this. Okay, so the head's kind of zoomed. Just do that. That should open it up. Oh, okay. All right, so that little thing in the front of your flash that you never use, that switches the zoom of the flash to make it as wide as possible. There's also, uh, there we go. Now it's got a little bit gotcha. more diffusion. It's okay. Yeah, there we go. It was zoomed. <laughs> Again, it's still, it's still in front of her. It's still a little bit punchy, but it's much, much nicer. Uh, and again, we're eliminating all the light in the space. Remember, with no flash, we have a black frame. This gives us control. Now, you can take a speed light, and you can put it in a tiny softbox. You can put it in a medium-sized softbox. You can bounce it. You can put it closer. You can do a lot of different things with it. Um, and it's just something you can keep in your bag. Drag the shutter. Uh, no, we're not going to do that, I don't think, this time. Because I'm, I'm trying to keep it basic. This is photo 101. I want them to bring me back for another one. 102, we'll do that. Uh, OK, so what I do want to do is switch to bigger flash, though, as we're starting to wind down. So the ultimate um, would be to go with the ultimate kind of control, I should say, would be to go with a large flash, right? So large flash, like the Profoto system uh, that I often use, is going to give you a lot more power. Um, and also, let's take a minute while Dave's setting up to talk a bit about kind of um, what's called flash duration, OK? So your flash is only firing for a very, very minute amount of time. That amount of time that it's firing is the flash duration. So in a situation where you have the black frame like we started, where none of the available light is affecting your shot, then effectively your shutter speed, no matter what it's set at, it could be set at 125, it could be set at whatever, as long as no available light's affecting the shot, effectively your shutter speed is your flash duration. Meaning that if my, flash, my camera is set at 250th of a second right now, but if my flash duration on my flash is 10,000th of a second, that's actually my shutter speed. This becomes important because that's how you stop action really well. You eliminate the, sp the, the light from the space, and then you use the incredibly short flash duration of your strobe to freeze things like water splashing, dancer's hair, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, higher end strobes, 
generally have shorter flash durations. Uh, they're generally the shortest at the lowest power of the strobe. So you kind of want to start with a strobe that's a little more powerful and then dial it to a lower setting if you want to stop action. Right? That's kind of what you're doing. Uh, there is that kind of statement that people usually make, like flash will just kind of stop the action. That is true. But if any of the, sorry, I hit my mic. If any of the uh, available light affects your shot, you will get what is called pop and blur, which basically means that the flash freezes it, and then there's a blur. You can use that for all kinds of creative things, and we do classes on that sometimes, but basically that's uh, what you'd get. So now, large, uh, large, uh, oh, good, need to let me know everything. Large uh, source, right, two foot by three foot softbox, flash, Dave's using a light meter to set up the exposure. Uh, he's got a remote that he's gonna put on top of the camera, which will fire the flash. And this will allow us to use multiple flashes, or, 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 or a single flash in this case, to create whatever kind of portrait that we wanna make. And we'll make a quick little, uh, actually we'll do a little combined uh, portrait at, at, to end it. We'll do like the, the tungsten hair light, just cause I feel like it. Start setting this up just because I like to get ahead of myself. Just to confuse you. Yeah, let's just, just do the pro photo. Again, even if you know you're going to use a bunch of lights, unless you absolutely have to go super fast, I always set up one light at a time. Because effectively, if you set up a bunch of lights and it doesn't look right, you got to start trying to figure out what light is wrong. All right, this is classic portrait lighting. Big soft box, nice, you know, across her skin, good skin tone. We could bounce a reflector into it. I mean, I think if you'd go to enough of these demos, what you, what you probably end up buying is this, right? Because I use it like all the time. <laughs> but you know, you can get reflectors that are out of the pop-up style, of course. Um, those are very popular. Those are great if you're going to uh, be on location because they're easy to travel with. But in studio, I usually just use a card. Again, they're, they're artisanal. Seth makes them in Brooklyn. Or you can pick up Michael's or whatever or some other place. Uh, okay, uh, there are like silvered ones and gold and stuff called Reflecto Board that are sold in places like Adorama, um, but for the white ones, you can just get them anywhere. Okay, that's nice, right? It's clean, simple. Let's add a hair light with the tungsten. We'll do a tungsten hair light. Why not? Uh, no optical slave. So, okay, so there is a thing. Yeah, a lot of Nikon speed lights have this actually. Canon fixed that. Um, it's called an optical slave, or they call it SU4 in Nikon land, which allows you to, actually Seth just did a demo on it, uh, it allows you to, f to make the flash fire when it sees another flash. Canon flashes do not come with this mode built in, at least this one doesn't, which means I just can't do it, uh, so I can't use that as my secondary light right now. Mm -hmm. You could buy something to make it fire. What I generally do is I use my, an additional r radio on it, if I was going to do that. Well, we didn't set up for this because I just make stuff up as I go, so. So we're gonna use this, we're gonna make a nice soft fill. Now, what's gonna happen here is we have two exposures happening, right? We have the exposure for our constant light and then we have the exposure for our flash. We're gonna, our shutter speed effectively is going to affect this, right? We'll leave everything else the same, 5.6, uh, 100 ISO and uh, then right now we're at 250, which is basically eliminating, we're gonna kill, turn these off, of course, when, once we're set up. Uh, no, let's, let's leave it warm. Okay. Let's go a warm, warm hair, let's start with. So let's meter this. So we're gonna meter it out, and we're gonna meter it so that we get 5.6. Did you see Seth violate me? Yes. So you're meter on what the flash is what not The flash is already set. Once you have one light in place, right, you're not gonna change anything else. We're gonna change uh, the shutter speed only because if I change my aperture or my ISO, that will affect my, re affect my flash exposure, right? But effectively, the shutter speed of the camera isn't doing anything right now for the flash, right? Uh, by the way, this is called an open-ended uh, silk because one end is 
open, right? It's like rough. The reason it's like that is because you can use that edge to kind of feather the light into your set if you need to do that. I'm just getting rid of the line, but if you were gonna have a line going across the set, um, sometimes you'll use these too if you wanna like put it, if something's gonna move towards your camera, you can put it uh, between the light and the person so they walk into the diffuse light as they get closer. I'm gonna do just the tungsten real quick. All right, we're gonna do just the tungsten. So Dave's turning off the flash. And he's gonna make an exposure so we can see where the hair light's at, right? It's pretty slow. Okay, that's a little hot. That's a little hot. So, so that's a bit bright. Do we have the meter? Did it meter it one second? I did not. I did oh. not meter it. Well, I used the camera meter. I used the camera meter, which of course is trick because it's backlight. Yeah. So we'll take the meter. Again, right now I'm at 250, 5'6", 100 ISO. I'm going to uh, change my meter out of flash mode because there's multiple modes. I'm going to change it into ambient mode. I'm going to leave it at uh, 100 ISO, 250, and I'm going to meter the back of her hair. It's showing me 1.1. I want 5'6", so I'm going to just change my shutter speed until it goes to 5.6. One tenth of a second. And that's where I'm gonna start. Then we're gonna look, because remember, a meter only gives you what it thinks is the right exposure. And maybe I want the hair light brighter or darker or whatever, you know, that's up to me. Okay, that's not terrible. I think that's a good place to start. Can I go a little longer? Let's go a little bit of a longer exposure to get a little bit of brighter hair light. And again, it's also gonna light the background a bit because we have some light falling on the background, which is fine. I think it looks nice. Okay, that looks pretty decent, right? Now, you can see that there is some light on the front of her face, right? She's not a total silhouette because some of the light is bouncing off this white thing and coming back and hitting her, right? That means she's gonna have to be a little bit still because otherwise, when she moves, that exposure is gonna affect the flash. Then we will, in fact, have a pop and blur. But it's a portrait, you know? She's not jumping around. We should be fine with that. So let's turn the flash on. I find that it's important when you're photographing people and you have these situations to, you're in your head all the time, right, doing the math because you don't want to screw it up. But, you know, just tell them. Say, listen, I got to go a little slower because of this, so just know that you don't jump around. There. That's pretty nice. Now. The Pro Photo Recycle is so fast it was recycled before the shot was done. Did you see? No, I'm serious. It was a beep while it was still there. Yeah. Okay. So again, it's sharp enough. If she was moving, I mean, at at a eighth, of, a sixth of a second, if she moves too much, can you laugh on cue? You're an actor. Sure. Okay. Good. She's been doing this whole time, obviously, so I'm not very funny. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, wait. She just hears the. You have to tell her a knock-knock joke, or something. Well, no, just shoot her when she starts laughing. Oh, or, or just start moving. Yeah. Go ahead. Just, just, just move. Move around a little bit. Jump, jump around, <laughs> jump, is that a song? Jump, jump, that's like the, there we go, all right, right. So now she's moving, sixth of a second, right? We can see her hair is very blurry because that's only getting that exposure, but her face is still pretty sharp, right? Because mostly only the flash is affecting her. So even with that little bit of movement, she's still okay, but you are definitely getting this ghosting here, which you may or may not like, you know? So keep that in mind. Usually bright areas do it, like let's look at her teeth. Nope, not bad. Usually it's the brighter areas where you get the ghosting, so you gotta be a little wary of like, oh, it looks fine, and then your teeth are all blurry, you don't want that. Nobody wants blurry teeth. All right, questions. So that's two point lighting. One shot with the blue gel to make it neutral. Now, if we, if we wanted to add a blue gel to this, right, to make it neutral, what's gonna happen? We will lose light. So what's a better option? We're gonna gel this one orange. Why? Because this is way more powerful, right? All we're doing is ma matching the lights. It doesn't matter which one we gel. If we gel this guy to make him tungsten, I can just dial up the flash power. If I gel this one, I'm gonna have to give him more shutter speed. We don't wanna have to do that. So we'll do that. Generally speaking, if you're gonna gel a light, gel either the one that you have to gel the least number of, like if there was like 10 of these, then I might be like, okay, well, hold on. Uh, or the most powerful one. Because right now the Profoto light is only set at 3.5 out of 10. So it's got all kinds of place to move, right? Questions? Does the flash work, do you have to set that? Obviously, it's not through the lens, right? 
OK, there is, so the question is, how do you set the flash or whatever? Um, this, this system does have through the lens uh, TTL capability. We're not using it, though. Yeah. So meter? No, Clip. It was on the flood. No. Oh, I put it over there. Mm, I am notorious for losing uh, clips, so yeah. So that's why Seth only gives me one at a time. So yeah, through the lens metering with the flash would automatically compensate um, by adding the gel. Since we're not using that, we're going to compensate ourselves. Uh, we'll just use the light meter. It's easy as that. It's probably going to eat like a, maybe a stop. So let's see. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong mode. It's always important to set the mode correctly. Okay. Uh, four or five, so give me a little bit more. And that's too much. We have stopped down. A little more, a little less. So he's basically, one more time, sorry. Dave's basically adjusting the light with the remote. It's five. Give it like two tenths more, it's fine. Okay, so we have a question online about rear curtain sink. Has anybody ever seen rear window? Okay, good. That's my answer to that question. No, so rear curtain sink is when the flash fires at the end of the exposure. Um, basically what that means is, typically when you're using flash in, in a long exposure like we are here, you're gonna have the flash and then the rest of the exposure happens. With rear curtain, the, the the camera opens up, starts to expose. Beautiful. The camera opens up and starts to expose, and then the flash fires at the end. There are certain advantages to doing that, um, none of which are now. Um, it basically has to do a lot if, you're gonna, if things are moving, where the person freezes. Um, it's not really relevant in this situation. Um, I tend to, to, uh, to not use it for portraits, because I think it throws people off the flash firing at the end, but you know, you can. Oh, there we go. So now we're neutral, right? And how do we do that? We basically made them the same color temperature, right? And there she is. She's looking good. You really want a third light in there, I can tell. All right, we're going to do one more light. Technically, technically, we're doing three-point lighting because we have the reflector, right? But let's just say he's like, you know what? That's nice, but I don't feel like the background's even enough. Or I, don't, I will not be able to light the whole background with this, so we're not going to do that. Let's do a... Uh, Let's just do a burst behind her like we did before. Actually, I'm gonna do two things. Okay, it says 99 for some reason. There we go, all right. So, we're gonna do, hmm. I need, I need a help, I need help. Emma. Emma, come help. <laughs> do we have a flag? All right. So, one advantage of using a softbox, Emma, <laughs> One advantage of using a softbox is that, oh, perfect. It, you, are the, you can be the black card. Okay. One advantage of using a softbox is it helps you control spill, right? What we're getting here is light bouncing off this and hitting this background. That's why we have light back there, which I was liking at first, but now we're going to have Emma actually block it. Okay. So you're going to come here with this. That should mostly work. You have to hide in there. So are you just like this? Well, we want to block it from the background, but not from the, from the, the model. Hold that for you. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm going to have you, you're probably going to go in there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, that's not in the shot, right? Emma, okay. Emma's not in the shot. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I am, I'm sure, but I'll hide back here. Uh, is that doing anything? A little to my left or yours? To the left, to the left. <laughs> Isn't that a song too? Hold on. You have very small feet. What size shoe do you wear? <laughs> yeah. Really? It looks so tiny. Maybe it's a style of shoe. <laughs> All right. So we got uh, control. Look how small our feet are. Do you have I'm not saying they're like weirdly strong, small, but okay, so we've got a key light here, which is a flash, right? Gelled to match uh, tungsten, because we have a tungsten light back here. 
we are putting it through diffusion to give us a nice soft glow on her hair. And then uh, Emma is our soft box over here blocking the, the, the light with a, with a card. Um, and then I just threw a little halo back there with my uh, I can. Well, I guess you can plug it in too, it's got a little plugger. So uh, yeah, there you go. Good enough? All right, perfect. Questions before we wrap? Oh, no questions. It was too simple, too hard. We could use an umbrella. You mean at 3 o'clock? Yes. We have, an we have an umbrella, and we will use it. I forgot to use it. So we will use an umbrella, and you guys can see the difference. Basically, umbrellas are going to throw the light uh, in a more wide pattern. That's mostly the difference. But we'll use umbrellas in the next setup. Um, so we're, we're all going to stream on Facebook at 3. So if you guys want to like do that, um, or if you're online doing it now, you already, you already skipped half of work watching this anyways. You might as well watch the one at 3 o'clock. It's going to be good. And then at 4.30, we stream on my Facebook. If you guys haven't been watching that, basically, you can't hear him right now, but at, at 4.30, he tells me all the stuff that I've been doing wrong the whole time, so that's really fun. Um, and next week, though, is going to be good. Yeah. Beauty photography. Hasselblad Braun's going to be here. We're going to do a full beauty shoot. It's going to be more complex, but you'll see, even in that more complex situation, we're just using the same stuff that we did now. I, I, I purposely stream, uh, kind of use like inexpensive and basic equipment in this one to start with to show you guys that the concepts are the same. There's reasons to use uh, more high-end, more expensive equipment, and we'll talk about that when we're using it. Um, but in general, using light and knowing how to use light is what's important, right? And you can make you know very, very fleshed out full shots uh, with only the knowledge that you have and whatever tools you have. Seth goes live on Instagram, IRM's Instagram, every Monday at 3 o'clock. It should be awesome. What are you doing this week? My YouTube channel, we also have a bunch of stuff on, Daniel Norton Photographer, so check that out. If you're already on YouTube, check that out. We have some cool stuff there, and we're going to do more cool stuff uh, that's not Adorama friendly, if you know what I mean. Does that make it sound pornographic? It's not. But, uh, but, 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 but I probably swear a lot more, so my mother watches this one. Oh, and Seth's going to be here Monday. I'm sorry you guys online don't get to see Seth's demos. They're pretty amazing, uh, but uh, he's not ready for prime time. So, uh, <laughs> but, but he goes live at three, so check that out on Instagram. But if you're local, come to Seth's demo. It's going to be on speed lights. Yeah. It's going to be using small flash uh, and tissue paper. Oh, yeah, actually, he's going to use this. I'm going to give it to him right now. Uh -huh. Boom, it's, it's getting used. You'll see that used on Monday demo. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for coming. We'll see you. <laughs> Very good.